What if I told you that the ammo cook-off explosions in War Thunder are way less violent than they would be in real life? Today, we're going to find out what would happen if Gaijin made those explosions truly realistic and how that would completely change the game. Before we start, it's important to note that this video was created purely for informative and educational purposes. Several studies and scenarios were reviewed during its development. However, due to today's political climate and social media restrictions, and to avoid potential issues such as content removal or legal misunderstandings, most of the detailed sections were simplified or omitted. Everything shown here is meant only as a comparison within the context of War Thunder. First, you need to understand just how devastating an ammo cook-off can be. Let's start with a real case, a KV-2 from 1941. Look closely at the photos. There's practically nothing left of the tank. Sections of the hull and turret are missing, and there's even a crater where the vehicle once stood. Debris is scattered across the street, all the result of a full ammunition cook-off. So, how powerful could that explosion really have been? Let's break it down and then compare it with what War Thunder shows in-game. According to Russian Wikipedia, the KV-2 usually carried mostly high-explosive shells when firing from static positions. The most common one, the OF-530, used a two-piece loading system and contained about 5.5 and 6.9 kilograms of explosive filler. But for consistency, we'll stick with War Thunder's figure, which is 5.8 kilograms. With a full load of 36 rounds, that adds up to around 210 kilograms of TNT equivalent, just from the shells alone. That's not even counting the propellant fuel or anything else on board. Now let's throw fuel into the mix. The KV-2 carried roughly 615 liters of diesel, or about 520 kilograms. In pure physics terms, that's energy equivalent to about 5.4 tons of TNT, but that number's a theoretical ceiling. Diesel normally burns or deflagrates rather than detonates. Still, if conditions align, vaporized fuel, partial confinement, ruptured tanks, and a strong shock from nearby detonations, a portion of that energy can contribute to a sudden pressure pulse. For our analysis, we assume a conservative 5% fuel contribution. Combining both factors, the modeled explosion amounts to roughly 480 kilograms of TNT. Considering that part of the blast would be confined within the tank, only about 80% of that energy would escape into the atmosphere. In effect, that means a 400 kilogram free air blast, about twice as powerful as a 750 pound M117 bomb. In other words, standing next to a KV-2 when it cooks off would quite literally erase you from existence. For our second real world case, let's look at something even more dramatic, a Centurion Avra ammo explosion during Operation Granby in 1991. This incident involved not one, but two Avres, both nearly full of ammunition and fuel. The combined explosion was estimated at over one ton of explosives. Most of the documentation for this event was compiled by Joe Ferries on the Radhibot website. Now, imagine that same event in War Thunder. The Avre might be the single tank with the greatest potential to obliterate everything around it. Each Avre could carry 53 rounds of 165 mm Hesh shells, each containing about 20 kilograms of TNT equivalent. That's roughly 1.1 tons of TNT from the shells alone. That's almost three times the explosive potential of our KV-2 example. If we include the 546 liters of diesel fuel, about 460 kilograms, and again assume a 5% fuel contribution, the total comes to about 1.3 tons of TNT equivalent. That's on the same order of magnitude as the destructive energy of a 3,000 kilogram Soviet bomb and more than enough to wipe out any tank in the immediate area. For comparison, when I tested that bomb in-game, the resulting crater measured roughly 16.5 meters across, roughly the width of five T-44 medium tanks side by side, and was capable of destroying a heavy tank at nearly 20 meters. So, how does War Thunder actually handle ammo cook-offs? Currently, there are three main animation types. Slow cook-off. Rounds ignite gradually. The turret may or may not pop off. Quick cook-off, a faster chain reaction. Again, the turret might blow off or stay put. Full cook-off, the entire hull disintegrates and only the turret remains. The last one is the version we demonstrated in each of our real-world cases, and it's the only one that conveys anything close to the destructive potential we've been discussing. Practically speaking, if you're in a light vehicle and a nearby tank experiences one of the two more violent animations, 
you'll often be destroyed or at least lose critical modules. Heavy tanks tend to suffer module damage or visible damage without actually being knocked out. This detail is rarely noticeable anyway, because most teammates don't park right on top of one another. So the effects of a cook-off aren't often felt the way they would be in reality. The result is that ammo cook-offs aren't very historically accurate or well represented in game. A more authentic system could calculate a TNT equivalent for each vehicle's ammo cook-off and scale the explosion accordingly across the existing animation tiers, 20%, 50%, and 100% of the potential, since ammunition can fail or detonate in different ways, as the game already implies. That would make blast radius, overpressure effects, and collateral damage feel more consistent and grounded, while still fitting the current animation logic. So, what do you think? Would you like to see tank ammo explosions behave realistically, like in real life? Or do you worry that some teammates might just load up every single shell to troll the entire team? Let me know what you think down in the comments below.